Hi, Trick Honors. This is day three, and this is the standard normal distribution. So this was what we left off with day two, and we understood all of these percentages and our homework corresponded to these. Uh, let's revisit that last problem from the homework. The wing lengths of house flies are normally distributed with a mean of 4.6 millimeters and a standard deviation of 0.4 millimeters. What percent of flies have wing lengths between 4.6 and 5.4? So this worked out really nicely because it fit into this normal distribution and we could find the percentages perfectly. So it was 34% plus 13.5%, which is 47.5%. Part B, what percent of flies have wing, le wing lengths less than 4.1? And if we take a second and like draw the situation, We're talking about a value that is less than 4.1, but 4.2 is our mark that corresponds with that graph that we understood all the percentages about. So what today is about is extending the idea and being able to find percentages when it doesn't fit perfectly into that within one standard deviation or within two standard deviations or three standard deviations. So that is the standard normal because we said that all of these normal distributions follow the same percentages. So for all of these situations, we standardize. So we are going to let this represent being one or two or three standard deviations above the mean or below the mean. And how to find these values is this process right here. We call it a z-score and we take the data value and we subtract the mean and we divide by the standard deviation. And that makes sense. So if we have 4.6 as our mean, how do we go to zero? Well, we subtract the mean and then we divide by the standard deviation. Similarly for five, five minus 4.6 is 0.4 divided by 0.4 is one. So this will work with every single problem we do. The z-score gives us the cumulative area that is to the left of the z-value. So for any z value that we get, uh, the, the percentage is going to be to the left of that z value. All right, so let's practice using the z table. The z table is something that you have um, in OneNote, but you might also want to print that. So I also linked it for you um, in our Canvas instructions. So the probability that z is less than zero is this visual right here and you might already understand that that represents the mean and that's awesome and so that should be 50 percent um, today i'm going to use decimals just to show you that you can actually use both part b the probability that z is bigger than zero should also be 50 percent or 0.5 the probability that z is less than 1.42 so here's your zoo, uh, zero, and 1.4 will be like here, and we're talking this probability. So now we need to find that on our z table. So looking at your z table, one thing to know is that we're dealing with a positive z. So the first side is negatives. So I'm going to move on to the positives, and it was 1.42. So I'm going to find the first place right here is 1.4, and then I intersect it with that hundredths place. So where these are intersecting is giving me the percentage. So 0.922 is the answer. Letter D, the probability that Z is less than negative 2.34. So here's zero, negative one, negative two. We're talking this much right here. Now it's negatives, and you need to find negative 2.3, and then go over 4 hundredths. So there's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. 0, 0.0096. Letter E, the probability that Z is bigger than 2.6. Keeping in mind that the z-table is going to give you everything to the left, this calculation 
is the same thing as 1 minus the probability that z is less than 2.60. So we're going to find 2.60 on the table, and I've already found that, and that's 0 0.9953. That gets you a probability of 0 0.0047. Letter D, the probability that z is between negative 1.56 and 1.3. So take a second and graph this. Here's negative 1.56, and then here's 1.3. And now we need this probability between. And this one has the bigger probability because it's more to the left. So I'm going to color it in. It's this much. And then if we take away the probability of negative 1.56, that's going to leave me with the between. So we need to come up with each of these. and then subtract. So 0 0.9032 minus 0 0.0594 is 0 0.8438. Letter E, the probability that the absolute value is less than 2.2 is exactly the same as between. So we have 0 0.9861 minus 0.0139 is 0.9722. Just as a quick visual, it should be like this. Letter F, the probability that Z is greater than 2.2 means two different things. It is the probability that Z is bigger than 2.2 or Z is less than negative 2.2. And that, again, connects with what we did at the very beginning of our year with um, the gray tor problem is when we were solving any inequalities with the absolute value. So now we're talking about this region or this region, which is exactly the complement of what we did in E. So you could do 1 minus 0.9722 and get 0 0.0278. The other thing that you can do is use symmetry in the graph. So find this probability and then multiply by two. Example one, a study finds that the weights of infants at birth are normally distributed with a mean of 3,270 grams and a standard deviation of 600 grams. An infant is randomly chosen. What is the probability that the infant weighs less than 4,170 grams? So this is a context situation. We don't have the Z value right away as we did earlier when we were looking through the Z table. So step one is gonna to be to find that Z score. So Z is equal to our data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And that is equal to 1.5. So the question is, what is the probability that the infant weighs less than the 4,170 grams. So the probability we're finding is the probability that Z is less than 1.5. We standardized, and that's what we can use uh, to look up in our table. So in our table, we're talking about this uh, probability right here, and that is 0.9332. Part B, what is the probability that the infant weighs 3,990 grams or more? Find that Z score first. This time, we want or more. So that is this probability, which will be 1 minus the probability uh, that z is less than 1.2. Letter C, what is the probability that the infant weighs between 3,000 and 3,576 grams. So you need to find two different z-scores. I'm going to call them z1 and z2. And here is negative 0.45, and here is positive 0.51, and we want 
the probability of between. So we can express it like this, and that'll mean the bigger probability of 0.51 minus the lower probability of this value. So 0 0.6950 minus 0.3264 is 0.3686. Example 2. Scientists conducted aerial surveys of a seal sanctuary and recorded the number of seals they observed during each survey. The number of seals they observed were normally distributed with a mean of 73 seals and a standard deviation of 14.1 seals. I'm going to skip part A because it's just like what we did in example 1. Part B, find the number of seals observed if the z-score is negative 1.5. So this time we know the z-score and we need to figure out the data value. So we just have to reverse order of operations. So we multiply by 14.1 and then we're going to add 73. So that is approximately 52 seals. In part C, the percent to the left of a z-score is 0.8599. What is the number of seals to make this happen? So there's actually two things that we're going to have to do. We need to first figure out what z-score corresponds to 0.8599, and then we're going to have to do this step again to figure out the data value. So let's explore in our z-table. Knowing that our percentage is point, or our probability is 0.8599, I know that my z-score should be positive because it's really big. And now you really just kind of have to look which of these values seems closest to 0.8599. Boom, there it is, 1.08. So that's our z-score. And then we do the exact same calculation that we just did. So this time, when you reverse operation, so multiply by 14.1, add 73, this gets you approximately 88 seals. Letter D, find the number of seals observed 6% within the mean. The fact that it says within the mean means that we are on either side of the mean. So it's 6% here, and it's 6% here, which leaves you with 44% in each of these two regions. So we need to figure out the z-score that corresponds here and also here. And this one's going to be easier to find. So we're going to go to our table and find a 0.44 in our table. That should be negative because it's less than 0.5 or less than the 50%. So I would say that this one right here is the closest to 0.44. It's not perfect, but it's the one that's closest without going um, a lot over. And that is, uh, I was just looking at the heading up here. So we have negative 0.15. And then that also tells us that positive 0.15 is also going to be a z-score because this is a symmetric distribution. So it's approximately 71 seals, uh, I should say between, between 71 seals and 75 seals. It's not totally perfect because there's decimals, but that's pretty close. So today we've introduced the z-table, um, and that helps us find percentages associated with really weird z-scores. So if you did a uh, day two material with the z-table, that the, you would get the exact same stuff. It's just that we live kind of in a one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation above or below the mean world. Um, and so that's why we know the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, because they're just so common. Uh, but sometimes in life you have to do percentages of things that are not standardized. So that's why we have the z-table. Follow um, up with some homework questions here, and then you also have a quizzes. Bye!